This video will give a little discussion of right triangles and the trig functions, the very often used trig functions of sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent of theta. So we have first here a right triangle, the right angle represented the little box symbol in the corner. And across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle. Then I have an angle theta down here. And across from the angle theta, what we'll call the opposite side of the triangle. And the side that's right next to the angle, we call that the adjacent side. So these are three kind of vocabulary terms. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. The opposite side is across from the angle theta. And the adjacent side is next to the angle theta. For various angles of theta, I'm just representing general theta up here, um, theta, sine theta will have the value of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta will have the value of length of the adjacent divided by length of the hypotenuse. And tangent of theta will be length of the opposite divided by length of the adjacent. Some students memorize this with soka toa, sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite uh, adjacent, and there's division between the last uh, two letters. Um, I've never used that. Um, I just memorized. The sine is associated with opposite. Tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So let's go into a triangle here and make some use of this. Uh, so we have a triangle here with the length 2 on this opposite side to the 30 degree angle. We have a hypotenuse of length 4 and x is unknown. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate x first. So the two short sides individually squared and added together. 2 squared plus x squared equals the hypotenuse squared, 4 squared. I'm going to subtract 2 squared from both sides. 16 minus 4, that generates a 12. Now square root of x squared generates x. And square root of 12 can be simplified. Um, it's 4 times 3. 12 is 4 times 3. And then the square root of 4 generates the 2 out of front. Square root of 3 remains. So the exact value would be 2 times square root of 3. Um, the value of x approximately is 3.464. 3.464. And you could, you know, roughly in your mind verify that's an okay answer. Uh, if we come back to x squared, it has to be 12. Uh, if x was 3, that would generate 9. That's too small. If x was 4, x squared would be 16. That's too big. Uh, 3.464 is our value. Now let's get into the trig functions. So the sine of 30 degrees. <coughs> we know that this value of x is now 2 squared of 3. If I keep the exact value, 2 squared of 3. The sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So the opposite is 2, hypotenuse is 4. The sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. I'm now using a particular value for theta. So I've X'd off the theta symbol. It's going to be sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. You can always check to see if your calculator is in the correct mode, degrees versus radians. By evaluating sine of 30 degrees on your calculator, you should get 0.5. If that's not correct, uh, check the mode on your calculator. Uh, have someone help you set the mode to degrees. Then cosine of 30 degrees. The cosine is computed by taking the adjacent side, 2 square root of 3, and dividing by the hypotenuse of 4. And if we simplify this a little bit, we can. there's a common factor of 2 in the numerator and denominator. So the exact value of cosine 30 degrees is square root of 3 divided by 2. Tangent of 30 degrees, again crossing off the theta symbol, doing 30 degrees for this specific case. Tangent is the opposite side, 2, divided by the adjacent side, 2 square root of 3. I'm going <coughs> to multiply top and bottom here by square root of 3. And I get 2 square root of 3 divided by 2 square root of 3 times square root of 3. That produces just a 3. 
So to go from this step to this step, I multiplied numerator by square root of 3, I multiplied denominator by square root of 3, and 2 square root of 3 square root of 3, that simplifies to 2 times 3. Then dividing out the 2's, and we get an exact value of tangent of 30 degrees is square root of 3 divided by 3. So that particular case, and you come up with values for those uh, trig functions. Um, let's go to this same triangle, and now I'm putting in the other angle, the 60 degrees, and the cosine of 30 degrees, suppose we want to use cosine and calculate the value of x. And let's say it's 2 meters and 4 meters for the, uh, the length of those sides. So if you recall, cosine is the adjacent side, x, that's the unknown we need, divided by hypotenuse of 4. So I'd multiply both sides by 4, and kind of rearranging here, but multiplying both sides by 4. x is equal to 4 times cosine of 30. If you use your calculator, you'll find cosine of 30 is approximately 0.866 and that gives us 3.464 meters, and that's the same number we had on the uh, earlier part of the video. What about using sine? Well, to determine x by use of the sine function, the sine deals with opposite sides, so I can't use the 30 degree. I have to move up here to the 60 degree. The x is opposite to the 60 degree angle. So six, sine of 60 degrees would be opposite divided by hypotenuse. Again, multiply both sides by 4. x is 4 times sine of 60 degrees, and we get sine of 60 degrees is approximately 0.866, and we get the same result. It doesn't matter if you use cosine or sine. What about making use of tangent? Well, the tangent involves the opposite side, 2, divided by the adjacent, x. So let's multiply both sides by x, divide both sides by tangent of 30 and we come up that x is 2 divided by tangent of 30. Again, if you want to think of it cross multiplying or you know, step by step, multiply both sides of this original by x. So the x's will cancel on the right. I'll have an x times tangent of 30 temporarily. And then divide both sides by tangent of 30 degrees. The tangents of 30 will cancel on the left, leaving us x. And we're dividing by tangent of 30 on the right side. Tangent of 30 degrees, approximately in a calculator, 0.57735. Divide that into 2. Again, we get x of 0.3464 meters. So sine, cosine, and tangent. Make sure you know the mode of your calculator. Um, in some situations, not as common as degrees, but some situations you use radians um, on your calculator. Okay. What about the uh, functions themselves? We can put any angle into these functions, but we'll get back a limited range of values. Uh, we'll get values only between minus 1 and 1. You can try this. Just put in random numbers for the angle and activate sine or cosine, and you'll get values in between minus 1. Tangent is a little different. Tangent will return values between minus infinity and plus infinity. If there are some values that won't work, so you can experiment with that as well. Um, but tangent theta has a different range, <clears throat> minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, the domain is the same. You can put any angle into the tangent function. Uh, sorry, except for the case that uh, creates a division by zero. So my bad, I misspoke there. Sine and cosine, you can use any angle for the tangent function. You cannot use any value. You have to avoid any situation where this x value is 0, or this adjacent side is 0. That occurs at 90 degrees. Um, so avoid that. Anyway, the other functions that we'll need in uh, some calculations are the inverse trig functions. This is not 1 over sine. The sine to the minus 1, this minus 1 is not a power. It's a notation. So this is the inverse sine function. It is not 1 over sine of x. Inverse cosine, inverse tangent. These, we put a number into the function, and we get back an angle. Now, the sine, cosine are restricted in what they uh, return, minus 1 and 1. 
When we come to the inverse sine, now there's a restriction on what x number we can put into sine and cosine. You have to be in between minus 1 and 1. Um, and then inverse tangent, you can put in any number. And we'll get back an angle. And again, depending on the mode of your calculator, you'll get back degrees or radians. So make sure you know what mode your calculator is, uh, is set to. Then some use here of the inverse function, inverse trig function. If I apply inverse sine to the sine function, I get theta back, an angle. But it'll only be in the range of minus 90 to plus 90. If I take inverse cosine of cosine, I'll get back uh, an angle in the range of 0 to 180 degrees. And if I take inverse sine of tangent, I'll get back an angle in the range of minus 90 to plus 90. You can try this on your calculator um, using applying the, you know, pick any angle you want, put it into these trig functions, you know, pick uh, 120 degrees, take the sine of that, and then take the inverse sine. You'll find that you're in this uh, in this range. Okay, let's go for a new problem here. Suppose that we have a case of um, three for the opposite side and four for the uh, hypotenuse, and we want to know the value of x, and perhaps we want to know the value of theta. How would you propose to uh, to work out this problem? Well. I'm going to work it out on uh, on paper here. We're looking for this value of x, and we're also looking for the value of theta. So <coughs> let's uh, go ahead and find the value of theta first. To find the value of theta, should I use um, a sine, cosine, or tangent? Something boiled down to that. Um, well, if you use cosine then we, and trying to find theta, that puts two unknowns into one equation. Same problem with tangent of theta, opposite divided by adjacent, two unknown. So it's the sine function that is um, best here. Now if we write the definition here, sine of theta is the length of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So to find the value of theta, I'm going to apply inverse sine to sine of theta. I have to do this to both sides. And I'm going to put 0.75 here instead of 3 fourths. Um, on this left side, inverse sine of sine, these are inverse functions of each other. And that just generates for me a theta. And now I come to my calculator, I activate the inverse sine function with an argument of 0.75. And what I get back in my calculator, 48.59 degrees, I'm rounding a little bit, but 48.59 degrees is the value for theta. Uh, what if we want to find x? Well, let's use the cosine function to come up with the value for x. So first I'll write the general kind of description here. Cosine theta is the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. So in this particular problem, we have cosine. We know the angle is 48.59 degrees. And that's equal to x divided by 4. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. Four times cosine of 48.59 degrees is the x value. And go ahead and evaluate the cosine of 48.59 on your calculator, multiply by 4, and you'll come up that x is 2.65 <coughs> for a value. And if this is 4 meters, then x is 2.65 meters. These sides will always have the same units, should always have the same units. If they're not the same, you should convert them before you try to do any of these calculations. Uh, this was sine of theta is 3 meters divided by 4 meters um, because we need a pure number here, not mixed units. Okay, pause and uh, re-examine that if you need to. Let's go on to a new problem. Suppose we have a right triangle and the opposite side is 3 and the adjacent side is 5. How should we come up with a value for theta? How should we process this? Well, 
tangent theta is what we can most easily use. I'm not going to use Pythagorean theorem and find the value of the hypotenuse. Let's go directly and use tangent theta. Tangent theta is 3, the opposite side, divided by the adjacent, 3 fifths. And now I'm going to take inverse tangent of tangent of theta. I must do the same operation to the right side. Inverse tangent, all right, 0.6. So our theta, use your calculator and take inverse tangent of 0.6. And I came up with 30.96 degrees. Hope you do as well. So there we have the, uh, the trig functions, the use of the trig functions. Uh, let's come back to uh, this page that uh, has a little bit of information about their range and domain. Uh, if you need more uh, questions answered about that, see your instructor. And we have the basic definitions here. The sine of theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And the tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. Learn this vocabulary and the labeling. That will save you a lot of grief later. If you are taking this uh, studying for physics course, I have physics tutorials and lectures, sample problems. Physics.gpclements.com lists those. There's nothing to buy at this site. You don't have to register. You don't have to give me any of your email address or anything. You just go to the site and find the video that will be helpful to you, I hope. So keep practicing and ask your instructor questions.